In other words, we are literally always, every time, 100% of the time, always going to be landing on top of each other now in pubs so that we get a cash bonus right Just away more money, yeah. so we can buy loadout easier and faster. Activision devs do not play their own game. 3,000 devs can't figure out how to add a reconnect feature to a AAA title, I guess. I don't know. Because Infinity Ward doesn't tell their consumers anything. Maybe that'll take some of the sweats away from uh, Shoot House. You can cope about that, for sure. Thanks for tweeting, at least. Thanks for doing more than Infinity Ward has done. They just keep tweeting about the fucking, the soccer bundles in the store. Things that are bad. We've, oh. got, we've got a couple words. Why don't you <laughs> pick it off, Tanner? We've got to... This is going to be a, a longer section than the first part you guys heard. Change it, obviously, of course. We are live, boys and girls. And today we have an episode for you. Welcome to the Drop Shot Call of Duty Podcast, episode number 413. Also, my name is Casey, also known as Razanon. Today, I'm joined by Young Tanner. Yeah. And we've actually got some content to sink our little teeth into mm -hmm. this afternoon. We got some items like. to talk about. In fact, we have too many items to talk about, which we'll get into in a moment. But basically, as many of you probably know, we have finally gotten... I shouldn't say finally. Um... This is about when we expected it. Uh, we got our season three blog post. So that's how they've been doing things for the past couple of months, if not more than a year. Uh, release a blog post with a ton of info on the upcoming season about a week out and then release the patch notes for it like a day out, um, which I quite like. I like this format they've been doing for a while now, especially for a podcast. It's great. Because uh, we can kind of go over everything before it launches. Um, but even if I were not a podcaster, I would like this format a lot. It was a lot better than when we had Infinity Ward. No one would know when the next season is happening. Mm. And then they would just drop it. Just like a surprise Beyonce album. They would just release it. Oh, servers are offline, I guess. Cool. And then they would not release patch notes for it until another like four days after the game's already out. Uh, the season is already out. So it's a lot better now. Um, and anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, we've gotten that blog post. So we're going to go over that today. Uh, there is a lot to go over in the blog post. There is a lot of commentary on the TL um, about this blog post as well, uh, because it's a pretty contentious patch from the looks of it um there's even more buzz i would say on the timeline than there usually is following a new season blog post and there are reasons for that which we will get into now because the blog post is so large and because call of duty tries to do the most now with like eight game modes that they try to keep updated we are going to uh, take a page from our own book. I believe we did this last season. We're going to do it again this uh, week for this season. We're going to break this blog post up into two episodes. So today we're going to cover everything except for Rebirth Island. And then on Saturday, we are going to cover Rebirth Island. That's basically what we're going to be doing. Um, that split isn't going to be super clean because the blog post isn't split super cleanly on this topic. So we'll probably touch on Rebirth today, but we're not going to go into, into any huge detail. We're going to save that for Saturday. And then on Saturday, we will go into all the nitty gritty for the Rebirth Island info in the blog post. And um, that'll also allow us to, to spend a lot more time on Saturday giving our, you know, thoughts and perspective. Yeah. On rather the than things just kind of reading, reading it quickly, going over it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so it'll feel more like a Saturday episode as well. We'll give you guys info on that on Saturday from the blog post, but we're going to talk a lot about our opinions, what we 
think they should have done if it was a good move, etc. You got you you know a typical kind of Saturday vibe. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what is in store for today. And even leaving Rebirth aside, there's still a lot to talk about uh, with this blog post. Now, before we get into that, we did get a new patron. Welcome to our newest platinum patron, Game Punk 1985. <laughs> Absolutely change it. Going straight to platinum, getting those Q and A apps. Yeah, don't like the name <clears throat> very much. Yeah, no, it's uh, not the slightest. No, not in the slightest. It's a very standard gamer name. It's something. Yeah. Like you have like your little gamer name with like words you enjoy and then the year you were born. Yeah. That has to be the most classic gamer name, actually. It almost seems fake. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like a, yeah, it does seem like a it's bot. It's like one of those bots you run into in Modern Warfare 3, even though they say there are no bots in the game, they would have a, a right. name like Game Punk. Yeah, 1985. it's like yeah. noun, noun, year. Yeah, it's yeah. like a, it's like a, I don't know, Gun Bandit 1993. Yeah. It's like, okay, Gamer you're girl. not real. Gamer Girl 1999. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. It's a little young, but um. anyways, welcome bot to the uh, the Patreon, and we appreciate that, and thank you. Our newest platinum platinum, rather patron. Uh, now, speaking of the Patreon, we have done some episodes recently. We finished up our episodes for the month of March, um, and since we last announced what we've covered this month, um, we have done two episodes. So one of those was the highly anticipated, coveted, What's it? and very well-received psych episode. I was going to say, uh, you're talking about the same episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, controller versus KBAM. So I played controller only for the entirety of season two. Uh, haven't been playing much the past like two weeks, but before that, basically since the launch of season two up until then, I was playing quite a lot. So I played a lot of roller, um, in Warzone and in multiplayer for this season. And before that, I had played a lot of, a lot more KBAM, obviously. Uh, and since nothing really happened this entire month for us to cover in terms of bonus content. I figured it would be a good time, a good month to talk about the two inputs, compare them, contrast them, give my opinion as someone who played a fair amount of controller, a fair number of hours, and then quite a bit still more hours on KBAM. Um, I thought it was going to be an interesting episode. I thought it would be a good episode. Once we were done recording, I stood by that assessment. And then we released it, and I still stood by that assessment. <laughs> and then all of you complained about it. So, okay. Yeah, nobody it. liked that episode. That was no one liked it. That honestly yeah. may have been our. No one liked it. God, that's like yeah, that was not received well at all. That's probably that like was a, the worst. That was probably a bottom three, bottom five Patreon episode of all time in terms of what we saw. Yeah. In terms of uh, listener reviews, it was the worst Patreon episode we've ever done. Yeah. So if you want to go listen to it, I guess. I already did. Again, I disagree, but if you want to listen to what everyone else tells me, it was a terrible episode. Patreon.com slash the drop shot. You can do that. That is now live for all of our patrons. Um, rest assured, by the way, just quickly, we will never talk about this again. I am done. This is it. I couldn't have been more fair and balanced. And we Fox everyone's News, still fair mad. and balanced. So we will trust me never talk about this topic again. There's nothing to there's nothing more to say and there's certainly nothing more to be gained. So um yeah, if that was your objective, you guys won. I'm done. Um but anyway, we won't delete the episode or anything. It's still up. Again, I thought it was interesting. And if you've been uh, thinking of 
trying one input or another, I think you'll find it insightful. At least, and it's, you know, it's one guy's perspective, but um, I did have a lot of data to back up a lot of what I was saying. And, um, and if you haven't played on both inputs, I think you'll be surprised either way um, at the differences. Because, like I was, you know, um, after having played on Roller for the whole season. So, anyway, that episode is now live. Uh, you can go listen to that. And then more recently, in fact, this morning, our last Patreon episode went live for the month of March, in which Tanner and I talked about resurgence. So we had gotten this blog post and a bunch of tweets uh, yesterday. So... We wanted to talk about Resurgence anyway on Patreon because it had been a while. Not that anything's really changed, but um, the all those tweets in that blog post came at a good time because we kind of used that as a springboard to talk about Resurgence generally, basically. Yeah. Um, and where and ranked Resurgence in particular, and where that's heading, and Rebirth Island, and all of that. I don't really know how I would I don't know how I would summarize what we talked about other than resurgence, ranked resurgence and like the state of resurgence and what they need to do. That was kind of the the whole episode. I thought it was really fun. Um it was more loosely structured than most of our episodes. Uh but I think those are good sometimes. Well, a lot and of it I was actually talking that. about BR too. It wasn't just that's resurgence true. for yeah. sure. Actually, a lot of what I wanted to talk about was BR, yeah, because it's kind of like well, how they haven't done anything to Urzikstan, how it the game doesn't have an identity, kind of just rehashing, honestly, all the things that I said like four months ago the game felt like. It still feels that way, and they've done nothing to change any of that. So we kind of just went over that a little bit, how it doesn't really, well, it hasn't felt like BR for a while now, and kind of seems like they don't want it to at this point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that definitely seems to be the case. So basically just an analysis of the state of Warzone generally, both be both Battle Resurgence and Resurgence, because um, there isn't a Battle Royale mode anymore. Uh, and then also we kind of forecast what we can expect for the rest of this year and even like next year. So, for example, here's an interesting question for you guys, if you haven't listened to the episode yet. What's going on with World Series of Warzone this year? Yeah. It's a pretty interesting question, right? Because you might say, oh, well, it's going to be big map trios with the ranked rule set, just like it was last year. Wait, what ranked rule set? Because there's no BR ranked still. And the game's halfway through its life cycle, by the way. So are we going to get ranked in like two months and then people can play for a week and then they have to start making their World Series of Warzone rosters? Okay, got it. How do you qualify? Okay, got it. Um, it's pretty interesting. So are we looking at like a resurgence World Series of Warzone? Find out more of our God, imagine how boring that would be to watch. That would be so shot. boring to watch, dude. Oh my um, god, just constantly respawning. God damn, that would be awful. Yeah. Like Warzone yeah. 2 sucked last year, but watching the World Series of Warzone was actually super exciting. But this, god, that would be awful. Yeah. Especially because it would, yeah, it, yeah, I don't know how they would handle it. Would, would there, whatever. I, I don't know. Um. So anyway, yeah, we there was some, you know, again, prognosticating in that app so you guys can go listen to that as well and those episodes are both available to every tier of patron so if you become a patron at any tier you can go listen to those um now last announcement before we get into this episode is a quick psa for you as a reminder if you want the uh infernal inferno weapon camo for this season, this season's camo, you have to do all eight weeks. You have to do five weekly challenges from each of every eight weeks for this season. 
So if you are behind on your weekly challenges, get them done before season three launches. Otherwise, you'll never be able to get that camo. Um, if you've been taking a break or you've gotten bored, hop on, do some weekly challenges. You can track them now. Won't take you very long if you're interested in the camo because it does look cool and I'm doing it. Uh, I just finished week six uh, right before we started. So just a quick PSA. Don't forget if you want that weapon camo, you're going to have to do all those. You don't need for the six, Here it is. Huh? Week six. Wow. I'm on week seven. I finished week six. I do my weekly challenges in multiplayer. You do them in Warzone. So, like, I played a decent amount in week six, but I only finished three challenges. Because I don't track Warzone challenges, which I should if I'm going to be playing it, but whatever. All right, boys and girls. Season three blog post. So... We're starting with the season three blog post. They released a blog post. We're going to open it. And first, we're going to take a little peek, as always, as is tradition, at the roadmap. Oh, wow. The absolute roadmap. So it's coming out April 3rd. Leave no friend behind, K. Uh, and this Snoop is Dogg be... is there, by the way. Why is Snoop Dogg in the key artwork for season three? Okay. Bro's Got a friend. It. Bro is friendly, I guess. I don't know. Got it. Did you hear about his little bait, by the way, to sell, like, edibles? No. He, like, this was a couple of weeks ago. My dad, of all people, was the one that was that brought it up to me. He was like, Snoop Dogg's a marketing genius. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, oh, well, he tweeted that he's done smoking marijuana. And he said marijuana, of oh, course. Oh, yeah. He's so old. And then I was like, oh, that's crazy. Snoop Dogg's, like, the weed guy. And he's like, yeah, but he did it like the next day he tweeted that like he does edibles instead now buy his edibles <laughs> i was like okay yeah that was a, that while a good ago, marketing move yeah, actually i remember that it's just yep. my dad bringing it up to me of all people was so random i was like what do you why do you want snoop dogg's twitter like what anyway whatever bro's a anyway follower, holy yeah bro yeah bro's a pothead i guess uh here's the roadmap there's a lot of things on here uh so we're not going to go into any great detail on any roadmap items uh, cause it'll all be more detailed as we go through the blog post, but we are seeing, of course, Rebirth Island, uh, that's coming. It's another little screenshot of it. Looks very similar to the Rebirth we remember and Sunny. Little bit of clouds, well, we'll get into little it. bit of haze, but we'll get into it I on don't Saturday. Know. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get into it on Saturday, which is what I said. Um, so yeah, we're getting ranked on Rebirth. We'll get more into that. Uh, there's going to be a new contract on Rebirth. That's interesting. Uh, a new contract. Spy drones. Wow. Wonder what that could mean. When's the last time they had a good contract? Remember when they used to add good contracts? Big game bounty. Dude, I remember in Caldera, there were like three contracts that were added that were good. Yeah, there was, there was the one big to game blow bounty. up the, a parked car <laughs> to get an armored yeah. truck. It actually made no sense, but it was good. That one was, yeah, yeah, that the it needed some balance, but there were other good ones they added in Caldera. I remember liking them, and we actually used them. Yeah, what could spy drones be? It's yeah, like shooting yeah, I down know. drones, I wonder. Which it's a great question. Stupid. I don't know. No idea. Yeah. And then anyway, uh, we're also getting a climb and punishment gulag public event. So is that supposed to be a play on crime and punishment? By Dostoyevsky? I think it is. Weird, weird, weird to make a... Crime and punishment reference, but okay. Uh, a biometric scanner on Rebirth. New okay. smart displays on Rebirth. That's actually pretty cool. We'll get more into that on Saturday. It's not like a big deal or anything, but if you guys have played like Apex Legends before, there will be like animated billboards um, 
some might call them jumbotrons in Apex that are actually like reactive. So it'll show the current kill leader in that match. It'll be like Razanon, 200 kills, kill leader. And it'll show like the operator I'm using in that game. And then if I get a kill, it'll say 201 in real time. It's actually pretty cool. Rebirth's going to be doing something similar. I don't know why this should be on Rebirth only. I'm it's pretty a, sure this neat is a feature you should add everywhere, but well, okay. I'm pretty sure this is the same thing we had on Vondel. They they put these in a Vondel last year, and it just like literally showed like the weather or something. Remember that? Uh, no, I don't remember that's, that. That's what it was. My guess is it's the same thing. It would like basically show you if it was going to get foggy or if it was going to be sunny for the match. Like that was it. Oh, okay. It's, I really doubt they're going to put like kill leaders or anything on it. It's going to be dumb. And I don't even know why it's on the roadmap, to be honest, if that's all it is. Yeah, it's not quite roadmap worthy, but I, yeah, I guess, I don't know. I don't know the details. I saw, I scrolled past a Twitter clip that and someone was excited about it and showing it off. Oh, really? So I assumed it was going to be cool, but that would be cool. People if it's on Twitter like hype up things that are not cool all the time. So I don't know why I, I thought that. So yeah, maybe it will be cool. We'll get yeah. into it Saturday. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, uh, and a bunch of map exclusive things like there's a new field upgrade called squad rage, but it's going to be exclusive to rebirth Island. Okay. Just add it to everything. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know what that is either, but squad assemble. Just the word squad assemble. Got it. I. What is this icon? This is also, by the way, why like th this, a this season does mode? have a lot of content, but this is the other thing is people that were comparing it to Infinity Ward season three last year. That's what's funny is there are also a bunch of things on this on this roadmap that don't need to be there that aren't roadmap material, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what squad assemble is or means. I it doesn't know. say it's a game mode or either. a contract or what. Yeah. Assimilation. I I certainly hope Eight man not. rebirth yeah. squads. Six w. man rebirth rank squad. Can you imagine a six man stacking uh, you on ranked rebirth? I wouldn't be surprised if Ted Timmons gets his hands on ranked. Uh, variable time of day on rebirth. I don't love that uh, real potential downsides there, but maybe cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the weapon trade stations are coming back in season specialist bonus is going to be on rebirth in season and then foresight, which is where you basically it. It's like you did 10 recons. It shows you every circle uh, that'll be in season and rebirth as well. So this, by the way, already, this is exactly what we just talked about in our last Patreon episode, which went live this morning. Patreon.com slash drop shot for every patron, every tier. I'm very annoyed with all these map exclusive, like, yep. additions. It's like, what about like the, the people bunker that don't buster like Rebirth on Island? Keep. So is, yeah. Yeah, is, is the Bunker Buster not coming to Rebirth then? Is that just going to only stay on Fortune's Keep? And why? Don't waste your time adding new content if it's going to be map specific. Yeah. Yeah. And and mode specific too, because they'll add things that are only on Fortune's Keep and also only in unranked. Yeah. Like why why make a whole research vessel? It's not even a boat, it's a vessel. They do all that. It has its own path. It has like predetermined spots where it stops. A lot of development time. Yeah. And they put it on one map in one mode only. Hey, spend dev time on something that is going to impact everyone, not just people playing unranked mm -hmm. fortunes keep specifically. It's insane. And now but anyways, if there's an option to play like rebirth or Vondel even over fortunes keep, who's going to keep playing fortunes keep, but they, they spent all that time to add the research vessel into unranked fortunes. Right. Keep. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit. That's a massive okay for me. Oh, they'll yeah. probably just bring it to Rebirth, actually, too. It'll probably come to Rebirth Season 3 Reloaded. Rebirth. Anyways. Um, so, yeah. So, so far, that is the entire Warzone section. Awesome! There are, like, two I things like that are coming Stand, to Urzikstan. Oops. Yeah. yeah. Oops! If I like Urzikstan, nothing's happening Season 3, at least according to this roadmap. So, we'll see. Uh, moving on to weapons, ops, and more. 
So we're getting two new weapons, three new weapons. We'll talk about them more. Some new operators, super don't care. New perks is interesting. There are five of them also, which is a lot, which is cool, I think. Uh, although these things don't come to ranked multiplayer. So cool for pubs, but how many people are playing like pubs multiplayer still? I can't imagine super many. Probably a lot, honestly. <laughs> if they're playing multiplayer. How many people are playing yeah, multiplayer? I wonder, I yeah. wonder how many people play pubs versus ranked multiplayer. It's a good question, yeah, a lot actually. More playing pubs. You think? Yeah, I would guess. I think it's more. I don't think it's a lot more, though. But I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, we're getting five new perks. And then uh, new equipment, a new field upgrade, and then more aftermarket parts. Those are going to be fun. My favorite part of new seasons lately, by the way, is looking at the list of all the op aftermarket parts they're going to add and then seeing how many of them are even remotely <laughs> have a chance of being relevant. Yeah. Because as we they saw last... Cool. As we saw season two, yeah. It sounds cool to add a chainsaw to my fully automatic bullpup assault rifle, but is that super relevant? How many people, how many Navy SEALs in real life attach chainsaws, for example, to their guns? Probably literally zero. So kind of weird to add it to your video game where it's going to be even less useful than it might be in real life. But... It's pretty fun to make fun of, so we'll see how that yeah, goes. Yeah, they are interesting, the things they come up with. They are, yeah, they're creative. I'll give them that. They're not good or relevant or useful, but they're creative. Uh, so anyway, uh, we're getting new maps as well. Uh, I see a shark. I see a bunch of sharks, actually. Really? Um, I see high-rise, but with smoke added and fire. Got it. Um, and then some other maps. And some remap, uh, remastered maps. Grow House. I'm assuming that's Shoot House? I don't know. We'll get into it. Whatever. I don't. And then so. Capture the Flag, One in the Chamber, Minefield, and Escort. Ooh! Is that going to be like Safeguard from BO4? Wasn't Escort in MW2 last year? I think it was. Um, I think there was a mode called Escort. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, we didn't, nobody played MW2 multiplayer. I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get into that. And then uh, MWZ, I don't know what that is. And then events, we're getting some events. I don't, I can't say anything about them. Oh, Godzilla. goodness me. Good, Godzilla X Kong is coming back. That was one of the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. That was the worst thing that's ever happened to me before Warzone 2, actually, was the Godzilla event. Luckily, yeah. Ted Timmons has not tweeted 5,000 times about this yet. So he hopefully he it. doesn't overhype it again. Uh, but I'm sure he will. So, And I'm sure it will be not as good as he is making it sound. So, cool. Uh, and then 420. Okay. Cheech and Chong in a blaze they up event. They love weed. Jesus Christ, Dude, they, they love, love it. they love weed, it's yeah. It's so cringe, man. They love weed. Get over it. Cure your depression. You know Stop I'm smoking weed about. and you'll be cured, I promise. You know what I'm super curious about, by the way? I can't believe I've never thought of this before. What do you think the odds are that Activision requires a drug test to be hired at any of their studios? And if you test positive for weed, you will not be hired. I think the odds are quite high. Pretty weird. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. I think the I don't odds know how are that works. High. Uh, actually, I don't think in California, which is where most of their studios are, I don't think you can drug test employees anymore. I'm pretty sure they just made that illegal really? as of like this year, last year, that you can't drug test anymore. Or like you can't drug test new hires. Or There's some law passed about that, I know. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Every job I've ever gotten, besides being a small business owner, Borp a business, um, even if they didn't actually really give a darn about uh, darn tootin about smoking weed um i was drug tested for like everyone so mm -hmm. i don't know i'd be kind of surprised but yeah california would pass a law like that so i don't know but anyway there's the roadmap let's get into some details so scrolling down here we've got a lot of words huge massive words uh intimidating words even. yeah 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a trailer. Okay. Uh, and then there's a, there's another picture of the roadmap about one inch scroll down from the roadmap. So just a quarter of the size. In case you forgot the roadmap, they put it there again on like the same page, basically. So that's super cool. Um, keep going, keep going. Here's the overview. Okay. Content summary. Wow. We got a new look to the blog post. Yeah. You like this? Uh -huh, I Little that. table. I actually like how this looks. It's cute. Looks very futuristic-y. Kinda. Anyway. Uh, okay, and it starts off miserably. Sledgehammer Games is cooking. Is what the first thing after content summary section says. Got it. Uh, six core sixes maps are coming to season three. Three of which are brand new. One is a remaster. And two are repurposed from Vondel and Rebirth Island POIs. Oh, that's very interesting. They've made one repurposed Vondel POI into a sixes map. And they picked literally the worst possible spot. This was the docks. So the entire sixes map is just swimming. It's really bad. Wonder if they did that again. Um, and then a Rebirth Island POI. That could be interesting. Um, four game modes that we know of. So they're pretending they don't know what other game modes they're going to add. So got it. Uh, season three ranked play, of course. And then perks as well. So which include three new vests, new boots, and new gear. Wait, what did Plus you say about the, the dock or whatever? And enhanced vision goggles are coming during the season. What'd you say what? about a dock or whatever on Vondel? What were you saying? They made that a sixes map. Oh, remember? yeah. Uh huh. They picked yep. the worst possible POI yeah. on Vondel and made that a sixes map. That was wild. That was that crazy. Was pretty yeah. insane. So they're repurposing another Vondel POI. Yeah. So, well, it's literally impossible that the Vondel one is as bad. Yeah. Yeah. They picked literally. It's, uh, it's, it's, of every single it's POI, it was literally the worst one. Yep. So we'll see if they, yeah, we'll see how much better the next one is. Um, so anyway, here are the multiplayer maps. Uh, so again, six total. So at launch, we're getting one called Six Star. This Gorgeous. is brand new. Gorgeous. It's medium map. sized. It is pretty. Yeah. Um, what do they say about it? An incredible feat of engineering. The Hadika Six Star Resort sits atop a Dubai skyscraper and caters to the most discerning of guests. So then they write other words. Uh, looking at the screenshot here, there is a pool, the little swim-up bar. God, that would be fun. They love adding uh, bars in this year, man. I'm a big fan yeah, of it. Yeah, there's two bars on this map, in fact, the in these screenshots. Yeah. Alcoholics yeah. and weed addicts. Cool. By the way, pretty sure alcohol is not legal in Dubai. So not sure what that's all about. No. Uh, really? Yeah, maybe they serve Shirley Temples only in sparkling water. I no don't know. No alcohol in Dubai? That can't be real. I'm pretty sure. They would make billions every year if alcohol was legal. That's I'm crazy. pretty sure. I'm not positive, but. Mm. Yeah, you're probably wrong. In most, um, in most of these, like, Muslim countries where the government is, like, officially Muslim, alcohol is illegal because you're not allowed to drink alcohol in Islam. So I think that's the case in Dubai. Obviously, you can still get alcohol in Dubai, especially in Dubai. But I think it is technically illegal, although I don't know for sure. Um, anyways, whatever. Uh, the map itself, not any good screenshots, unfortunately. I mean, we're seeing the pool, which is like the east end based on the TAC map we have. And then we're also seeing just like small sections of the interior. So it's very hard for me to judge how so, this map will actually play. A lot of people are saying this is kind of like a remastered version of Raid. It's different. It's a different layout than Raid, mm. but a lot of people think the same. Because, yeah, the swimming pool on the right-hand side of the attack map here, the left-hand side is where, like, the statue is on Raid, that little area that's there. The mid-open okay. area, the spawns. A lot of the lanes are somewhat similar to Raid, but it's not a Raid remake. So I think this will be probably a very popular map. It looks dope. It does look similar to Raid based on the TAC map, actually. Yeah. Especially, like you're saying, that middle, like, 
it's like an open air courtyard kind of deal at mid with like the one piece of cover there. It's like a square. That's extremely reminiscent yeah. of raid with four points of access. Yeah. Yeah. Good comms on that. Okay. Yeah. So probably will play pretty well. Um, but we'll have to see. So moving on next new map is emergency. Oh, I thought this was okay. Yeah. I've, I made a mistake. So this is a brand new sixes map. It's called emergency. It is small sized. Um, looking at the screenshot, it looked like high rise, but the plane was blown up. But now that it's bigger and there's more detail, you can tell it's not high rise. In fact, yeah. Um, uh, based on the screenshots, this looks like it could be pretty good. Maybe depends on exactly what the interior of the very, of the building looks like because there are basically two buildings one of them is like small and in the corner of the map not going to be much action there there's a fairly large outside area and then there's a big building which is where most of the action is going to be so the size looks nice being quite good the size looks nice but the time of day the fog the smoke makes me think it'll not be good at all but like the actual size and layout looks decent. I think it'll just be ruined by things like that. Visibility clutter. Yeah. You know, that type of stuff. Yeah. It looks not a pretty map. Very at all. busy outside. The exact opposite of the, of six star. Yeah. 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 So, Oh we'll yeah. See so how that here goes. With black smoke billowing from the valley. Below. Oh goodness. Yeah. You don't want that. It, you don't want that. So anyway, we'll see how that plays. Um, I do like the size though. I like Yeah, it looks like a really small I like how many size. small maps they're adding this year. They're finally catching on. People like small maps. Especially in the middle of the game's life cycle where I just want to like level weapons quickly. Mm -hmm. I love a bunch of small maps. Yeah. So that's cool. Um and they've been making good ones. Like Stash House is a great map. So moving on, Grow House. This is a remaster. It is small sized as well. First released is Sphere during Season 3 of Vanguard. The layout of this deceptively compact map is similar, but the environment has changed significantly. Okay, yeah. I don't remember this map. I don't remember from any, I don't even remember the name. Sphere. Like the, the screenshots to me look like that one MW19 post-launch map. Where it has a left lane just like this and like the building layout, like all of that in the screenshot is almost the same as an MW19 map. That was a pretty fun one. That's what I was thinking this was. I have no idea what this is from Vanguard. I Yeah, I don't remember Sphere from Vanguard at all. Look it up. We must yeah, have just looked entirely look different. Vanguard. Sphere. Vanguard. Map. I... Bro, what? I have no idea what oh, this map is. Oh, this was added. I remember this screenshot. This was added like season four of Vanguard. So we probably well, it played season it like three. twice. I don't even remember. Yeah. Dude, I'm okay. not kidding. These screenshots don't even look familiar. I have no clue what this map is. The screenshot no of the sphere itself is what uh, tipped me off. Because okay. I remember it looking all futuristic-y. Yeah. We barely played it, though. Yeah, so this looks I, like yeah, a pretty good map. I don't know. It looks, yeah, it looks pretty decent uh, based on the layout. Uh, it is small, mm. but it's not like a small square. I think I'm starting to remember it now. I think it's coming back, maybe, based on the TAC map layout. There was some map in Vanguard I played, I think, one or two times, and I remember there was a lane on a cliff that I, like, fell off of, and this kind of looks like the, the bottom right side of the map. You can fall off a cliff or something. Maybe okay. that's it. But uh, if it's not the map I'm thinking of, then I have no idea what this is. Yeah. Um, it's small and it's thin. So if you look at the tack map, it's very narrow and long, but it's still small because it's so narrow. Yeah. Uh, maps like these are very hit or miss. <clears throat> and I think lobby dependent in some lobbies, a layout like this is very fun. Uh, but it's, like, very hard to flank on this map, it looks like to me. 
Um, so I don't know. Take it or leave it, I guess. Uh, yeah. We will see. So moving on. Tanked at launch. This is new repurposed core sixes medium sized map. I don't know what that means. Um, oh, okay. This is this is the Vondel Zoo. Yeah. That's what this is. That's what I said. Yep. It's the zoo. Okay. Drop into Vondel Zoo. After hours. Oh, after. Oh, we get to go in at night. Okay. I like that. In this fast paced, medium sized map developed by Beanox. So it's centered around a main aquarium structure within the Warzone POI. So I've played Vondel a lot and I've gone to the zoo a lot. This actually was like our first drop spot before we realized how good at the stadium is. Yeah. Um, how would it play in sixes? Uh, I don't think very well, to be honest. I don't think it's going to be a very good sixes map. I think it's a good POI in Warzone. I don't think it's going to be very good in sixes, though. Well, they be may be blocking off the stairs, if that's what you're thinking. Because it even that says here, the action is thinking, mainly yeah. at ground level. So I feel like okay. the roofs, you probably can't get on the roof. You probably can't even go up that one staircase uh, after you go through that like aquarium hallway. I bet that staircase is even blocked off there. So it's basically yeah. probably a two level map and most of it is all on that ground level. Yeah, because like even two of these screenshots are like the outer edges mm -hmm. um, of the map. So yeah, I think if it works like how I'm assuming it will, I think it would play pretty well. It, it would play horrible if they just took the POI and made it sixes. Yeah. So I don't think that's what they're doing. Yeah. You're probably yeah, that, right. that wouldn't make any sense if people could just get on that roof up there. That would have terrible flow for a sixes map. Yeah. That would be miserable. So even if they block that off though, I'm thinking of the interior building at zoo. The one that like I most commonly would find people and it's like, okay for sixes. It's hard to say. I'd have to just see the Well, map, that could but... all just be totally changed, too, because it just says it, it does say it's significantly reworked. So everything yeah, that's inside true. is probably different. Because even this top screenshot, I that tunnel can't is even not figure that Vondel, out. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. That little tunnel that you can walk through, that there's no shot that's in Vondel, and I've never noticed it. Well, there is like a tunnel type thing, but it does not look like that. No. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see how that plays, but interesting idea. Um, it looks pretty, by the way. Yeah, looks, looks cool. cool. I think it'll be a good one. Got some, you know, hanging sharks. Okay, moving Next on. Checkpoint, mid-season, new, repurposed. Sixes, small-sized. Uh, is this from Orlov? Yeah, that's Orlov Peak. It's a Rebirth Island. Oh. Idiot. Later in season three, as the Eastern POI known as Stronghold becomes the setting for some furious and fast paced combat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Uh, I don't think this is going to play well at all. I don't know. Like you were saying about That's Zoom, a fun area. That's a fun Depends area on Rebirth. Elevation it's you just can get. not that good on Rebirth because it's so much lower than everything. Yeah, yeah. This is the the most avoidable possible area in Rebirth. The only reason you would ever maybe go there is if you intend on getting the chopper, uh, which is like a guaranteed spawn down there. Um it is fun to fight there, though. You are, you are right, actually. But I like you again, like you said about Vondel. I think this is going to depend how many of these rooftops you can get to. The upper walkways and the control tower are sealed off, so combat is rapid with plenty of cover options. Okay, okay. So this could play well. They're pretty in that smart case. this year because if this was Infinity Ward and they took these. They would just put it into multiplayer and not change anything. So they've thought like about they did these things, with, um, obviously. You like know. they did with Fortress, remember? They just added the Fortress POI as a um, as its own resurgence map. Mm -hmm. Didn't change anything, and it was terrible. Not a single thing, yeah. Yeah, no, these so. act, all of these maps so far actually sound and look really good. Yeah. 
I think it's possible that this will play well. Yeah, especially if they blocked up those blocked off those upper areas. Um, they say small sized, but it doesn't look that small. This looks like medium sized to me, but we'll see how it plays. Uh, so moving on, Grime. We're getting mid season. This is a brand new small to medium sized map. Uh, okay. So we got a tunnel with a bunch of graffiti. We have a little French police car, looks like. Nope, London Canal. Which is what I said. Um, well away from Big Ben and the bright lights of in England's capital city. Wow. Yeah. Hard for me to tell. They pick the worst screenshots Ooh. in terms of like the how it'll play. Visit the murky brown waters of the docks. Ooh. It's only one yeah. side of the map realistically that won't get used, but ooh, don't love hearing that. Yeah. This will be the worst map of all of them we saw. Yeah. Looking at the tack map, though, it looks decent. Because that water is super avoidable. Yeah. And there's like the building as a lane. I think this could play well, but I'm literally only basing that on the tack map. It's very hard to say. So we'll see how that goes. It's coming mid season, and that's it. So cool. Uh, four game modes are coming to multiplayer. So capture the flag. I have nothing to say about that. One in the chamber, nothing to say oh, about yeah, that Oh yeah, that's totally either. repurposed. That capture the flag image is obviously from the new multiplayer map at Zoo. That's That does not exist in Vondel, so. Yeah, right. Looks fun. Uh, um, yeah, it does. So one in the chamber is also coming. There's a blindfolded operator, okay. I thought one in the uh, chamber was in the game already. I guess it was in MW2. I did too. I get that mixed up with a uh, gun game all the time. Um. But anyway, they're both coming at launch, so that's cool. Uh, minefield is coming mid-season. This, so there's a screenshot where there are eight prox mines on the ground. Already, I hate this mode. I already hate it. So let's see what they have to say about it. In the same oh, way God. that season two's horde point was hard point, but with zombies. Think of minefield as multiplayer, but with mines. Terrible idea. Ain't yeah. no way. Ain't yeah. no way. Let's add Holy. the worst, least interactive, most frustrating aspect of our multiplayer game and center a game mode around it. No thanks. I'm done. Um, okay. I'm I, done. The idea is kind of interesting, but it's going to no, be horrible. When you defeat a rival player, a prox mine is dropped at the enemy's corpse. This mine cannot be picked up and remains deadly to the enemy team. So the more your bad teammates die, the more mines are on the ground that you can die to. So if you're farming, it could be a little bit fun. It won't be, but okay. I hate this idea so much. Oh my goodness, yeah. Make sure you have EOD equipped for this one, so I'm not talking about it anymore. It's coming mid-season, and I will never play it. Uh, so there you go. Uh, and then game mode escort mid-season. This is a picture of Afghan. And we've got like a very futuristic looking little robot bud. Little Wally Dolly. What's the Wally? That's the movie. Anyway. Those Warzone veterans who remember playing the entertaining LTM known as Payload know what to expect here. As two teams, both with unlimited respawns. Oh, okay. I do remember this actually. Face off on a variety of maps with one side protecting a Maw, M A W. Mobile. I don't know. Uh, as it maneuvers across the map. Meanwhile, the opposing force has enemy takedowns. <clears throat> and the what does that mean? The opposing force has enemy takedowns in the grand prize of vehicular destruction on their minds. Oh, okay. Um, so the attacking team wants to escort the vehicle to the destination. The defending team wants to stop them or disable the vehicle. Uh, once the first game of the match is completed, the teams swap sides and the side with the quickest vehicle takedown wins. Okay. So it's, yeah, so it's exactly what it sounds like, escort. This could be fun. Um, and the fact that they're doing it on Six's maps rather than on Rebirth Island, which is where I last remember this game mode, payload being, uh, makes it interesting as well. Because it's very reminiscent of, in fact, I think this is actually identical to the game mode safeguard from BO4. 
I don't know if there are any differences between this and Safeguard, where you escort the robot and then switch sides. And that was a fun game mode. I used to hate it, but then we played it enough and it was actually pretty fun on certain maps. Yeah, it was good on certain Also, maps. one of those modes that was very map dependent, giga map dependent. Mm -hmm. Like some, some routes uh, for some maps were really fun and then some were just miserable. Like it would take you into like an open field and no attacking team literally ever got past it. Those were like the boring ones, but this could be actually quite fun. I'd be excited to play this. So that'll be coming uh, mid season. So now moving on to vortex playlist This is going to be in season as well. We have a bunch of goofy looking uh, pictures. I think here. It's like the same ones they've added like spore yard. Yeah. yeah. The Preternatural map variants, there's a college word for you, return in a special LTM playlist coming later in Season 3. So yeah, you get like the bioluminescent, all the jellyfish on uh, Scrapyard, all those map variants. So that's cool. Um, if you're into that, I'll be coming mid-season. Multiplayer ranked! Season 3 Intel! Wow. Launch window! So we have some operator skins here. I don't know if these are different than the ones or not, but they look cool. Um, anyway, prepare to grind for bragging rights in a full season of content, as well as numerous all new rewards. So yeah, we're not going to go into any great detail here. They usually don't change much with ranked play uh, other than the rewards they offer. So they go into a bunch of great detail on that. We're not going to do that, but there are the two reward tracks. One is SR dependent. One is just kind of playtime dependent, basically with the star track versus the SR track. Very cool. And then there will be end of season rewards again. Um, some of the rewards are stickers, operator skins, weapon blueprints, decals, weapon charms, all the usual stuff, weapon camos as well. Um, and then... Yeah, here's a look at the skill division rewards. Some of which look quite good, actually. Uh, the operator skins look great. The calling cards look actually pretty dope also. I like how they've done that. Um, and that's that. The top 250 ones this this uh, season are maybe the best looking ones we've seen yeah, yet. Yeah, they the, look really good. The top 250 mm -hmm. calling cards are really dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah like so all the, with there. I like it better than um, season two, so I'll definitely change mine out, my top two fifty out once I once season three is over. Yeah. So we talk more about rewards and all that, um, and then yeah, operator skins. So that's cool, uh, and then first place gets another thing. So whoever whoever can hide their cheats the best will get a special animated calling card mm -hmm. and emblem for being number one. That's very mm -hmm. cool. Uh, new perks and equipment. This is going to be interesting. So this is for multiplayer. Uh, they write a lot of words. Starting with a new perk, the vest. The gunslinger vest, in fact. Secondary weapon specialist. Okay. <laughs> so you don't get to use a primary weapon if you use this vest. But you get to use two secondary weapons. Oh, oh no. Why? Oh no, don't call it the gunslinger if you're not giving him a gun, man. Yeah. You get to use the... a you get to use a knife and a karambit. No. This is a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind, by the way, uh, that's funny. There is already there are already ways to use two secondaries. Like currently. Yep. For uh, in the in the very rare event where you want to level your pistol and do like launcher camos at the same time, but there are no launchers in this game, that's like the only use for two secondaries in multiplayer. But you can already do it anyway, so I don't know why we needed to add a vest to that effect. But got it. Um, you also get two tacticals, a lethal, and a field upgrade, and then you get gloves, boots, and two gear slots. So everything outside of the two secondary weapon slots looks good. Uh, you do get the four gears total. Um, so that's good, I guess. But um, 
This is interesting. The following benefits when using this vest apply to secondary weapons only. Refreshes stamina on kill. This doesn't matter. I can... Well, you know what? Hold on. That could be good if you're a knifing kid. Because you could tack sprint, stab someone... And if you're almost out of stamina, you'll instantly have more to keep tax sprinting. Yeah. Actually, maybe a use case for that. Improves reload speed. Got it. Reload while sprinting. So you don't have to use commando gloves. Got it. Or mag holster. Okay. Increase weapon swap speed by a minimum of 40%. And it's uh, that differs between weapons. Okay. And then spawn with maximum reserve ammo. Okay. So, yeah, I I don't know, man. Whatever. It's kind of funny, I guess. Yeah. If I were it's still doing weapon camos... Yeah, exactly. If I were still doing weapon camos, I might find a use for this, but I think, like, only knifing, maybe. Uh, but anyway, we're getting another vest, the Modular Assault Rig. Lethal and Tactical Scavenger. So you spawn with two tacticals, two lethals, a field upgrade, gloves, boots, and one gear slot... You start with max reserve ammo and you resupply lethals and tacticals from dead players. Mm. That's actually pretty interesting because this is new functionality. You can't do that right now. You can run like restock to recharge them or you can run scavenger to run over players to get bullets, but you currently can't run over players to get lethals and tacticals. And with this vest, you can. Uh, I could see this being useful. I don't know if yeah. I would run it. No, but I it's could see not it being something useful. I would run. It may add to grenade Very spam and multiplayer. Yeah. Possibly. Yep. Extremely um, toxic. Yeah. That's the only thing I'd be worried about. Especially on these small maps, too. People spamming more of that. That wouldn't be the best thing in the world, but. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, and then another new vest the compression carrier. Assisted healing and gas protection. So you get one lethal only. No tacticals, no field upgrades. You get gloves, boots, and one gear slot. Okay, so sounds awful so far. Immediately regenerate health after a kill or objective <laughs> capture. So we finally got quick fix. Yeah. In multiplayer. Wow. It's here. Reduced effects from gas grenades as well. This... I think I would actually, I think I will be running this. I will certainly be trying it. I don't care too much about losing tacticals because the tacticals I currently run are stims. But if I have quick fix, don't really care about that. Obviously. Mm -hmm. um, losing an extra lethal, super don't care. Losing a field upgrade, also super don't care. The only thing you're really missing out on is two gear slots. But... I think I'm okay with that because quick fix is going to be really strong. So finally they did it. Um, yeah, they finally did cool. it and reduced effects from gas grenades. Is a nice little bonus. I wonder how much that helps, but anyway, uh, new boots as well. Immune to movement reduction effects. So probably not worth running, but also probably decent because if you get stunned, you can just keep running. Um, yeah, which is actually pretty big because stuns really ruin your movement right now. Mm -hmm. So something. And a lot of people um, run stuns or they were last time I played multiplayer in December. Right. Yeah. And then a new gear, high gain antenna. The mini map is zoomed out for you and nearby allies. So this is like the Cold War perk. What was it called? I, I'm sure they've done it since Cold War anyway. But whatever. Uh, yeah, so you get a bigger mini-map for you and nearby allies. Enemies remain on radar longer for you and nearby allies if a nearby ally has the CCT comms vest perk. What? Because the comms That's vest weird. does the same thing. It zooms out the mini-map, you know? It, it zooms out the mini-map and... It does it for you and your teammates, too. So it's kind of just... It's like stacking oh. those two, essentially.
Okay. So instead of running the vest, basically, you can just use this as a piece of oh, gear. Oh, I understand. That's I forgot about that. Yeah. So this is a gear slot for the comms vest functionality. Yeah. See, ne see nearby ally radar pings from Intel Jacker and compass indicators from nearby ally signal jammers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty interesting. That's not a bad piece of gear, by the way. No. It's not. At all. No. So... Especially if you're running a vest with two gear slots, I could definitely see this being useful. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then we're getting a new tactical, the EMD mine. Procs triggered mine that sticks to surfaces. Okay. Once triggered, the mine shoots out tracker devices that reveal the enemy location and direction until removed. So basically, it's like the EMD grenade, except it's a tactical that is a mine instead. So... I kind of wish it was like a field upgrade instead because I feel like if I was going to run this, I would just run the EMD grenades. I wouldn't run, run the EMD mines unless I'm a camper, a disgusting camper. I could see it being good for that, actually. Yeah. So then you get an, yeah. an extra layer of kind of. Alerts. Yeah, you kind of set it up somewhere where people would be running through. Yeah. So, OK, whatever. Uh, and then enhanced vision goggles are coming mid-season as a field upgrade. We see a screenshot here. Um, okay. Looks like dehanced vision goggles, Yeah, man. I don't know if this is enhanced. I mean, I think I'd see these guys better if I didn't have these goofy uh, goggles on. Toggle between normal vision and enhanced vision with integrated target highlighting has limited battery. This is terrible and awful. The visibility in this game is way too good to ever be using something like this. This is not good and it's bad. And it has limited battery. So, yeah. I uh, would have loved this in MW19, but I don't care yeah. about it in this game. Highlight so, everyone yeah. bright red, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, next section, MWZ. Don't know what that means. Um. So, yeah. Just going to keep scrolling mm, Yeah, here. there we go. Call of Duty Warzone Overview. Oh, my gosh. And there there it is. we go. Yeah. Yep. My Yeah, my browser glitched and it scrolled right past yeah. Modern Warfare Zombies because it's not a fun game mode or a good one and you shouldn't play it. You should go play other games or Zombies games from other CODs that are older and better instead. Uh, so next section, Call of Duty Warzone Overview, and we will never talk about zombies again. If you want to hear our final thoughts, on zombies from this miserable games iteration. Patreon.com slash the drop shot. We talked about it there. It is not worth ever talking about again. It's unsalvageable and irredeemable. And Activision should feel bad for having done it. Uh, massive waste of developer resources. So here we go. Zombies. Psych. I don't know why I said that. Warzone. 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 Mobile. Nah. All right, James Hetfield, relax. Mobile, Content huh? summary. So here we go. Resurgence, rebirth. <laughs> Shut it. up. Welcome back to Rebirth Island. The weather is clear. Well. The visibility across the island is excellent. Well. And the action is about to heat up. Yeah, we'll see. I believe them, though, to be fair. I believe the visibility will be good. What surprises are in store? Yeah, I guess we'll find out. So, yeah, they, they say a lot of things, whatever. Um... Happy Rebirth Day. Welcome back to Rebirth Island launch. So, this is what we will be covering on Saturday. So, we're not going to really talk about it at this time. However, here's the TAC map. And it looks... Oh my gosh. Is that Rebirth? The exact same as I remember it, actually. Is yeah. that Rebirth? Holy. And yeah. we're getting the control center. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, the prison's still there too. Our favorite you see POI, that? the right control Right in the middle center. there, the prison is also still no, there. No, yeah. I didn't. What? What POI? Yeah, the prison, man. Oh, really? Oh my gosh, there's a dock too. Holy. Oh, there's water. You can swim out there. You see that? See those red lines? That's where you can swim to. You like swimming, man? Because they're adding it to Rebirth. That's actually true. We've never played Rebirth with the swimming in the game. And there's also an underground swimming thing that's new. Yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't be that big of an issue, but 
I don't think so either, but make it stop anyway. Yeah. Uh, make anyway, me yeah. drown w w by touching the water. If I step foot in the water, drown my character and respawn me, yeah. please. Kill yeah, me I, in the game. I agree. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. We're going to go into way more detail on Rebirth on Saturday. So, um... Yeah, they, they go over a section every on POI, a bunch of screenshots. It's a big section. They go over every POI. I'm just going to do a giga quick scroll here, kind of look at everything. Industry. Was there ever a POI called Industry? No, that's renamed, isn't it? That was, uh, was that Decontamination Station? Is that on the yes, map? Yes, that's what it was. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Er. Yeah, it was Decontamination. I think it was called like decontamination center or something. It could have been, I don't know. It was whatever. decontamination yeah, something. Yeah. They renamed it to industry. It, yeah, it looks the same. Um, let's see. Got the chopper spawning in the same spot again. Oh, okay. Wow. Yep. Chemical engineering. They used the yep. wars on one chopper in the image. They didn't No, They used the, the proper chopper that time. Good. Good for them. Chopper chopper. The doc. Sewage and power. Wow. So this little tunnel looks new. That'll be interesting to talk about. In the dock? Uh, yeah. That's water, isn't it? That green one? I think it's glowing Is weird. It water? I, I, Is I that think underwater? you swim through that. That's kind of what I was thinking. Oh, no. Yeah, probably. You're probably right. So that's not good. Um, yep. A boat. I'm on a boat. A wharf. It's an interesting word. Oh, in the control center. Man, the memories. Oh, it looks just like I remember her. Yep. The good old control center. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was oh, once a construction yeah. site. Yep. Yep. Classic. The prison. Yep. Got it. I wonder if they're going to add repels to the prison. We'll go over that um, on Saturday again, but just kind of looking at it all. There's one in one of the screenshots. Yeah. Wait, were there no repels on the old there one? There were. I mean, add more. Yeah, there were repels. There at were some repels. Point. Yeah. 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 There were repels. There were ladders. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, harbor. Another one here. This looks exactly the same as well. So, one thing I will say is this looks very similar, unlike Fortune's Keep, which they ruined. Um, they did not change nearly as much with this map as they did with Fortune's Keep, which is good because the ways they changed Fortune's Keep just made it worse. We've, we now know. So minimal map changes I'm a big fan of, and it really doesn't look much different from what I remember it, which is nice. Yeah. Um, with the exception of like now we can swim, so they added some functionality to the water areas. The I buildings are different on the interior as well. Some of them they've got, some of them have a little bit different layouts or kind of different pieces of not the actual building layout but different pieces of whatever inside of it so it kind of screws up or changes the layout a little bit but yeah the, the actual blueprint is pretty much exactly the same i think yeah which is good yeah yeah exactly uh so living quarters rebirth here. even the little tents are the same yeah this looks extremely similar to how it was which is awesome stronghold don't land there and then the TAC Atlas is live now, so that's cool. So yeah, There's we're going to go into way more detail again on that on Saturday. So tune in for that episode. Uh, the next section here is Warzone modes and public events. So here we go. New game mode, Call of Duty Warzone Boot Camp. Okay. I don't think new players need a boot camp because the level 40s in my games are the best players in my lobbies also. Coincidentally, yeah. that's weird. They don't need a boot camp. I need a boot camp. Give me the boot camp. So anyway, available on Urzix because they cheat. That's the joke. It's not a joke Got really, it. but yeah. anyway, available on Urzikstan. 44 players. Player count 44 up to 20 players and there are 24 bots. So, yeah, this is like a, yeah, just like a new player mode, I guess. Uh, I'm not going to read much about it. It's not like a serious game mode. It's a quad only training mode, either partied up or fill squad, providing a player's uh, snapshot of the real deal Warzone experience. It's half bots, half real players. So, by the way, the most interesting part about this is 
Activision has the capability to add bots to Warzone. So, a couple questions. How long have they had this capability? And have they deployed it in Warzone surreptitiously without mentioning it? Well, they said they have Fortnite it, yeah. has, like, bots in real BR, although they own up to it. Um, I think some other BRs do it as well. PUBG, maybe? Or, like, Daisy or something? I don't know. Um, and there has been speculation that there are some bots in, like, multiplayer and in Warzone. Like, literal bots, not, like, you know, your friend. Um... And now we have confirmation they are able to add bots to a Warzone experience. So they say there are no bots in like regular matches of Warzone, but they also lie a lot. So just an interesting thought. Wonder if there are bots. They do say lobbies. Warzone Bootcamp is the only mode in Warzone featuring bots. If this changes in the future, we'll ensure the community is informed ahead of time. They won't. Um, they love lying, so <laughs> let's be clear about that. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I don't know. I, is this restricted Dang, to, like, low levels Dang, there's no Champions anything? Quest in there. It doesn't sound like it. It's just player weapon and battle pass XP is limited. Um, it'll not progress your daily or weekly challenges, calling card challenges, weapon challenges, or Champions Quest. Okay. It'll not feature public events or advanced contracts. Basically, they just take a small area of the map, and you get into it, so and so it's like mini BR, basically. I hope like a recommended weapons, it gives people with a really low KD a recommended playlist and it tells them to play the bot mode. It'll tell them, hey, I'm recommending you play boot camp. You should really play boot camp, even though you're level 450. You really need it. Yeah. Man. Yeah. This would be so. kind of fun to dunk on really bad players exactly one time. I think I'll keep for it exactly players. one time yeah, and just slide cancel throwing knife the whole lobby. It would be the new DMZ player base, yeah. Oh my god, Although yeah. they'd probably be better than DMZ players. <sighs> yeah. Um, they, oh, the sure. worst players I've ever seen The worst Duty, video literally. game players. I'm not well, kidding. I don't know what's worse, a DMZ player or an average Battlefield player. That's close. Oh, that's Battlefield fair. players yeah. are probably worse, but DMZ players are the worst COD players in the world, for sure. Yeah, they're AFK beating their wives half the time, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they're Shout out to the wife too. beaters. Yeah, well, and yeah, okay. Um, anyway, this is cool. Uh, yeah, good little warm up mode, I guess. I don't know. I'll it's never not. play it, but yeah. Uh, new game mode, it's Rebirth exactly Resurgence. Lobby. That's weird because, oh, well, it's not a new game mode. It's just Resurgence on Rebirth Island, right? Is this like a different? Okay, available on Rebirth Island. Max player count is forty four. Yeah, I don't know why they say this is a new mode. It's Rebirth. It's Excuse me, it's Resurgence on Rebirth Island. The interesting thing here is the player count being 44. Um, now, again, we'll talk about this more on Saturday as well. But what is the player count on Fortune's Keep right now? And, how, and what is the size difference between Rebirth and Fortune's Keep? It's all very interesting. It's different? Okay. Rebirth Island is the perfect place for the faster-paced, more aggressive playstyle that Resurgence brings to BR. As you know, if you've dropped into other maps, your squad is here for the win, but accomplishing this requires more frequent engagements and greater risks. The Gulag is closed. Okay, just like in Resurgence. And anytime you're eliminated, you redeploy after a short respawn timer, providing, should say provided, you have teammates who are still battling across the island. Come for the loot, takedowns, and rapid combat and stay for the frantic final moments and earn that Rebirth Resurgence victory. Okay, cool. So now that I've read it, it's not different, right? What about that is different than normal Resurgence? And that's a 10. You can explain to me what I'm misunderstanding or that's a 10. So there you go. Classic JKN just telling lies. Uh, yeah, we'll talk more about the player count um, and how that compares to like Fortune's Keep. I do wonder what the Rebirth Jake Island a player count... Yeah, he did a lie. Uh, used to be. Um, What is the Fortune's Keep player count right now, Tanner? Do you know? Isn't it 50? Uh, 52, I think. 
52. Okay. Quads is 52, I'm pretty sure. So this is fewer players than Fortune's Keep, uh -huh. and that's a 10. Um, it is smaller than Fortune's Keep. Is it 12 players smaller or eight players smaller? Pretty sure this was always a player count. It was always about 44. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. That's good. Um, so, again, we'll talk more about that on Saturday. Uh, new game mode, Rebirth Resurgence Loaded mid-season. So we have a screenshot here of some wild looking weapon blueprints, by the way. The yeah, most wow. wild. That's holy. What the heck? A lot of bones. Yeah. Those are teeth. The the optic is a mouth, dude. It's a mouth, yeah. With ears what built onto do? it. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that thing is, but interesting. Cool skin. I'll be buying that. Yeah, what is on yeah, I don't know. Uh, ditch the ground loot in matches of resurgence and bringing your preferred loadout and custom equipment, meaning all players come fully locked and loaded right from the start of the match, enabling you to concentrate on the win without the need for ground cash collecting. Yeah, that'll You're be You're taken fun. out during a match, you redeploy using the same resurgence rules, but with the possibility of changing to another <gasps> of your custom loadouts. Wow. Oh. If you're out of ammo or equipment, the higher ratio of legendary and reusable loot boxes means you're never far from a fully kitted out operator, though you're here to bring the firepower and victory. That's cute. So we've seen this before, I think, like a resurgence mode where you just spawn with your loadout. And I like that idea. I don't like that it's just going to randomly grief you and pick like your sniper loadout every every once in a while. That doesn't seem necessary and and just detracts from the mode, basically, especially because if I really wanted to, I could delete every loadout except one and then I don't have to deal with that. So that seems unnecessary, but I do like Rebirth where you just immediately have your loadout. This is how ranked Rebirth should play, by the way. Um... But it's kind of cool, I guess. So there you go. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, and then we're getting Rebirth Lockdown mid-season. So we see a flag. 28 players. Lockdown comes to Rebirth Island with multiple, multiple squads tasked to capture and control zones across the map, scoring points for each zone successfully held, like a large-scale BR version of Hardpoint. I remember this coming out and when we first talked about it before it launched. We said, this could be fun and interesting. And then you ended up playing it and said it was pretty trash. It's pretty trash, yeah. So. It's pretty trash. So that's. It's just, I mean, I'll it's. Say. It's essentially just like squad TDM on the map with like objectives to capture and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. L. If you want to just get in a uh, bunch of action and shoot people, it's fun for that. A lot of people, I think, you know, use that to like warm up or whatever. Uh, a lot of this stuff we should just skip because this is all still talking about rebirth. Yeah, I guess you're right, huh? So, yeah, there's another public event rebirth infill strikes that'll be coming in season. Uh, yeah, that's okay. a big one that we'll talk about. Yeah. Um, uh, climb and oh, yeah, punishment. That's for stuff. six stand. Yeah. The lighthouse disintegration that happens sometimes. Yeah, that'll be big. We'll talk about that on Saturday. Prison roof can collapse. Um, the water tower can collapse. This is very cool, and we're going to get more into the details on Saturday, but basically there are elements of the map that can basically suffer destruction, but not all of them at the same time and not every game, and it's random. So it's basically going to be the same map you remember, but it'll be different sometimes because, like, the water tower falls or whatever. Very cool idea. We'll get more into the details and talk more about it on Saturday, but good idea from them. A new public event, Gulag, Climb and Punishment. So now we're getting off of Rebirth Island. This is for Urzikstan and Vondel, interestingly. This is a Gulag event. A duel to the death isn't the only option if you find yourself in a Gulag during BR. Yeah. This public event is announced at the start of your Gulag, 
worth keeping your comms on and negotiating with your opponent. Okay. Two ladders will drop from the roof, providing an easy escape route. And it's up to you both to trust each other and ascend to redeployment. Or you can engage in combat as normal and ignore the ladders, or pretend to agree to escaping and then <laughs> double cross a well-meaning rival during their climb. So what I don't understand is, what if I climb the ladder and my opponent doesn't? He probably has three or five seconds to get out too, is my guess. I'm thinking. There's probably some sort of a timer. It's not like you, obviously you can't both do it at the same time. So it has to be on some sort of a timer. Yeah, of it's course. probably like once the first person does it, it's probably like the flag countdown timer. Yeah, I guess. No, it has to be even shorter right. than that, I would think. But yeah, this sounds That's kind of cute right. in theory. That's exactly what I was going to say. In theory, this is cute, but no one's ever going to climb the ladder. Unless, uh, unless the timer is very short and then people are going to use it kind of like the repel in the current gulag. If they well, I wonder smoke. if the repel is still there, actually. I wonder if you can take the repel and just automatically win that way. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So what gulag is this? I've played Vondel BR like two times, so I don't remember the gulag. Is this the Vondel gulag or is this like a sneak peek at a new gulag we're getting or changes to the gulag. I don't know. That's actually a good, this is probably the Vondel I gulag well, since I don't recognize Cause the Vondel it. gulag has like, mm, like whiskey barrels oh, yeah, and stuff in it. It seems gulag. like, is it? Yeah. It's okay. like the middle of it. I don't remember like there being like all that greenery and stuff, but mm, yeah. okay. So yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I, I don't care that much about gulag stuff. So, uh, yeah, new public everyone. event mid-season. Heavy armor. So we got some guy who is tatted up. Tatted up. Wow. Or are those? He's a know. robot, isn't he? Looks like That's ink and then also a robot. Like metal. I don't know. So this is available on Rebirth Resurgence modes. Announced during infill. If this public event is activated, it allows you some added protection, enabling the equipping of an additional armor plate for the duration of the match? Wow. The extra plate slot is visible above your health bar, where plate info is normally seen. This increases your operator's armor hit points from 150 to 200. For the whole match, everyone gets four plates. That's crazy, dude. The extra plate... And this is an all rebirth resurgence. Oh, it's on rebirth Island. Okay. That's what that means. Yeah. Got it. That's what, re that's yeah. what rebirth is. Yeah. This is a terrible blog post. I hate how they skip between something for rebirth and then something for Urzikstan and then something for rebirth again. God, it's pissing me off. So again, we should skip all of this. This is a bunch of these are for rebirth. The next three are for rebirth. Yeah, this is very weird, by the way. That's what I was like telling you before, right? This is a weird... Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the, the just the whole blog post. Oh, the blog yeah, post is terrible. It's kind of like... Uh, also, yeah, yeah, I like that. I actually think that's a really cute idea. That could be fun. I wonder if it's in ranked. No, of course not. No way. No shot. Yeah, probably not, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway... Uh, and then, yeah, we'll we'll talk more about this again on Saturday. Oh, all Another this new stuff thing. is Rebirth. The Spy Drones is a new contract. We'll talk about that on Saturday. Um, a new Champions Quest, a new contract on Rebirth. We'll talk about that on Saturday. Um, Squad Rage on Rebirth. We'll talk about that on Saturday. A Utility Box on Rebirth only. Like, why? Yeah. Uh, whatever. Re refills uh, armor and ammo, and it's specific to one map. Why? Yeah. Terrible idea. Great idea, terrible execution to add it to only one map. Exactly. God, that pisses exactly. me off, man. Yep. Foresight on Rebirth. Specialist on Rebirth. Okay. Updated <laughs> movement. Aquatic gameplay comes to Rebirth on Rebirth. Okay. Biometric scanner, new feature on rebirth only. Okay, <laughs> dude. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. New variable, time of day. 
Rebirth only. Okay, yeah. Oh, got it. Cool. Okay. Uh, oh wait, smart displays. Rebirth Island. Okay. Yep. Um, squad assemble. This has to be for everything. Oh my gosh, resurgence and battle royale. We've Whoa. done it. They've <laughs> added something that affects Urzikstan. Here we go. Wow. Yeah, this is the first Urzikstan change besides the Gulag, if that counts, which it doesn't, by the way. Uh, the squad that stays together slays together. Oh God. During the infill God of resurgence damn and, it. and VR, expect to earn match rewards if you land near your most enthusiastic teammates who led the way. <laughs> the Got game it. is ruined. It's done. Yeah, season hey, two did is you my got, last season. Were you guys complaining about stackers? What is this? Let's reward stacking. Uh, when active, you'll receive a message to land with your squad to earn bonuses. What do you mean this, when active? What is, is it? This is purely optional, though you may find staying closer during enemy encounters helps your overall <sighs> team dynamics, as well as getting those W's. Uh, yeah, I don't know what this means. Okay, so go down. you get more... It shows. So it shows a map... And it shows circles. The preceding image above shows the three main landing examples. This is for your demonstration purposes only. The circle radii shown don't appear in your in-game tack map. When your first teammate lands, they create a small radius around them, roughly the size shown in the image. Um, the rest of the team simply needs to land within that radius to land together, as follows. Um, okay, so then you can do like a full squad landing... Okay, so what do you get for? In match rewards, did your team successfully land together? You'll know if you did in your reward. XP cash, and even a, su a special supply UAV revealing <laughs> legendary and personal <laughs> loot cash locations across across oh. the vicinity. Uh, oh, each squad no. member receives XP. Um, supply UAVs. Okay, this isn't even worth doing, actually, so that's good. Well, the cash Supply UAVs be. are actually just annoying, so I would rather not get a supply UAV. The only reward that's, like, rel relevant, I think, is the cash one. That's true. But so what does that um, mean? You get a cash bonus from what? When you open chests within... No, I think just, like, once you land, you just get cash, like, if you finished a contract, basically. Uh, huh. Okay. And this is, to clarify, this was coming to Resurgence and Battle Royale. Yeah, not in Ranked Play, but Resurgence and Battle Royale. Okay. Got it. So it's not always active either. That's the weird thing. It doesn't say it's an event. It says it's a new feature. Well, it's and active if say, you activate it by landing with your teammates. Yeah. Otherwise, it just doesn't... If you land somewhere not with your teammates and everyone lands 100 meters apart, nothing activates. But if okay. one teammate lands on the other one that hit the ground, um, then that's like a half squad landing, which it talks about here somewhat. And then basically everyone has to overlap somewhat their yeah, little get, radii. And that. then, yeah. So it's, and then you get okay. more bonuses based on how many people that is. So if this always works and I'm playing pubs, Urzikstan. What is the first thing we do? We land somewhere and loot for money to buy a loadout. Mm -hmm. In other words, we are literally always, every time, 100% of the time, always going to be landing on top of each other now in pubs so that we get a cash bonus right Just away more money, yeah. so we can buy loadout easier and faster. So, yeah, the XP reward doesn't matter. The uh, supply UAV doesn't really matter either, but that cash bonus means everyone in pubs is going to be landing on top of each yep. other so they can buy loadout sooner. Why wouldn't? And they? it says a sizable XP and cash bonus. So, yeah, I mean, you, that could be a few thousand or something. Yeah, this won't this wouldn't be an annoying issue for like Battle Royale, like Urzikstan, but on Resurgence having to deal with a full team landing inside of a building together, which a lot of people do anyways. It's just going to make that even worse. Early game fights, I think, but we'll see. Maybe it'll end up not being that bad. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, this is weird. I don't know how I feel about it. 
Because on the one hand, I like the idea of being able to buy my loadout sooner on Urzikstan. Wait a second. Also, for the in-match reward, it says a special supply UAV revealing legendary and personal loot cache locations. Does that mean it doesn't even show you the regular ones? Does that mean just legendary chests and personal supply boxes? Because if that's the case, I actually like that feature a lot. I or, would imagine no, because what if there are none? by you you just get a uav sweep and nothing shows up well i mean if you're on a resurgence map like rebirth that sweep would be big but yeah, yeah but what maybe. about urzikstan i mean legendary chests there are a lot of those like sure. when you pop when you pop a normal like supply box uav on urzikstan you see like at least it's five like legendary chests every time there are a ton no, yes no, there no, are no, yes no, there no. are there no. are a ton yes there are no yes there are no. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I we'll see. I Either way, I don't know what to think of this. Because, yeah, on the one hand, I like the idea of getting more money really easily for, like, Urzikstan pubs to get load out. On the other hand, everyone's going to be doing this. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be good for the game? It might not be bad. I It's hard to tell. I, I don't know. And I do wonder how this would affect Resurgence as well. Yeah. This is weird. I don't know. My bigger, the more interesting question to me is, why did the devs think this was a good idea? I'm not saying it's a bad idea necessarily. I have to see how it plays, but what were the devs hoping to accomplish? Ted here? was sick of dying in their play tests and he wanted teammates to help him out. So he made this, he added this feature in. So his, from him. Yeah. So his teammates yeah. would land four meters from him He's instead of 12 his meters yeah with cash. guys yeah, come on maybe. seriously i keep dying off rip here help yeah i wonder what yeah i mean i guess i don't know i would love to hear the dev thought process on this but we didn't get a blurb about it but that's gonna change the early game a lot though i think everywhere on resurgence and in br i think the early game is gonna play quite a bit differently I don't know if it'll play better or worse, honestly, because team fights are fun. So like if our team lands all on top of each other and another team pretty close also does, that's not like necessarily a bad thing, but it's not necessarily a good thing either. I don't really know what to think. This will be interesting. We'll keep you guys appraised on that. Appraised rather. Um, so anyway. Uh, the next, next couple feature, things are all rebirth, rebirth only. Got it. Yep. Unsubstantiated intel, bad comms, as I like to call them. This is the, this is the my teammates special. So I guess they're adding it as an official feature on rebirth only. Got it. Uh, bunker entrances on Urzikstan only. In wow! season. New feature: bunker entrances. Entrances. Excuse me. Mid season. Available on Urzikstan only. Late breaking reports suggest that the unsealing of bunkers across the entirety of Urzikstan may be underway. Uh, previous non corroborated reports of Bunker 5's opening remain unverified, though some operators have described large tanks containing human remains okay. within this location. Now that additional bunker opening mechanisms may have activated, all operators are encouraged to explore with extreme caution. Those scans of the area have not substantiated any imminent threats. Okay, so, yeah, this is reminiscent to me of, like, the Verdansk vaults. Yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. You go there, you... What I don't know is how you gain access, because in Verdansk, you either needed a key card or you needed to know the little goofy ah uh, code. So you typed in, like, a bunch of numbers. Um, however... I don't know if either of those things will be required on Urzikstan or if I just open the door. It doesn't say. And if you can just open the door, the loot shouldn't be quite as good as like the Verdansk bunker loot was. Since it requires like literally just going there. Yeah. I think this is fine though. Yeah, it Unless should be cool. the rewards are like super OP in there. Well, but we know we'll it won't include specialists and foresight because those are added to That's the game, true. but only on Rebirth Island. That is true. Yeah. Rebirth. So we'll see how that goes. I am curious how they function. But unfortunately, this is not going to massively change how Urzikstan plays. Not at all. No. 
Not at you all. You know, it like, will. This will be neat hardly. for like the first couple times you go there, and then yeah. it's like okay, basically the same old map. So mm -hmm. anyway, Warzone ranked play on Rebirth Island. So again, Rebirth. we will talk about this on Saturday, but ranked. Resurgence, ranked Warzone, will only be playable as Resurgence on Rebirth Island once Season 3 happens. It'll no longer be on Fortune's Keep. And then they go into a lot of details. And again, we'll go over this more on Saturday, but there's a preview of all the rewards here. Again, the two separate reward tracks. Uh, some cool-looking rewards, I would say. Um... Yeah, the skill division rewards look very cool. Still. I like those weapon camos too. Based on the little squares. Mm -hmm. Those look really dope, actually. Yeah. Those look super cool. Except the top 250 weapon camo looks gaudy and gross. But the other ones look good. Like the swirls. Little swirlies. Uh, and they're animated weapon camos too. Or, no. Just no. iridescent. And top 250 weapon camos are animated. No, they're not. Only top 250 weapon camos animated. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Well. Uh, and then, yeah, some operator skins. And then the first place player, so whoever cheats. Whoever whoever can get the most Chinese bot lobbies, um, I guess, uh, is going to get their own unique calling card and emblem. Cool. Uh, and then Call of Duty Warzone Mobile Overview. Okay. That's a we skip. are not talking about Warzone Mobile ever. So, yeah. Um, it launched. Don't care. I just can't stress enough how much I hate this blog post. And now it's going into... Oh, wait. No, this is still mobile. That's still mobile. Yep. Lots of mobile content, fellas. Lots of mobile content. And then connected content overview is the next section. So basically, this is probably going to say you can level your stuff on any game, which is cool. Uh, and now moving on to some new content for us. Weapons. Four new weapons. The FJX Horus is a submachine gun coming at launch Miserable in the Battle Pass. Miserable name, the Horus, okay. Yeah, that's like I mean, a, you can make up any word you want and you make it Horus. I don't know. <laughs> I think this might be because of the Warhammer thing they're doing. Because one of the nerd stuff? Warhammer characters is named Horus. Yeah. Okay. The Got Horus it. heresy. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's my guess anyway. No, that but would anyway, make sense. The picture looks like a miserable little SMG. It's an MP9. Doesn't look good. And that's what I said. An ultra compact SMG with best-in-class CQC damage and mobility. So best-in-class close-quarters combat damage. I wonder if that's literally true, meaning its first damage range is like three meters, but it has the fastest time to kill inside of that. I might be looking too much into that, but that would be interesting. Well, they, they yeah, that. they've said that before, and then we've looked at things, and it's like, oh, this is not the fastest like they they've say things like that where it's like the fastest killing ar and it's just literally not it's not the fastest mm -hmm. killing ar so i wouldn't trust this but i'm going to guess this is going to feel like a wsp swarm a lot of visual recoil the gun's going to really shake it's going to have a high fire rate uh and it will do a good amount of damage i disagree i feel like this is going to feel like um Kind of like an MP7, where it's like high fire rate, very low recoil, and terrible damage range, and terrible damage fall off. That's my guess at how this will feel. I'm curious to see, though. I We don't really know. It says it has great damage and mobility. Um, machine pistol game, SMG, machine yeah, that's pistol not going to feel like an MP7. That's going to feel... A favorite of those who like to pack a punch on the run. This weapon has an incredible fire rate and class-leading mobility. And handling help mitigates the recoil control. What does that mean? I don't know. I think you're right, though. They're making it sound like it will have a good amount of recoil, actually. Yeah, so, I think it's going to be a bouncy yeah. little sucker. So... 
Yeah, probably insane on the toy. Um, we'll talk more about it once it comes out. And then another thing we're getting at launch is a sniper rifle, the Moors, M-O-R-S. This will also be in at launch. Uh, 19 levels. Single load railgun delivers a high damage payload with excellent velocity and penetration. I don't... What's a railgun? I think this is like an advanced warfare sniper, basically. So I think... I don't know how it works if it's literally just one round and then you essentially have to reload, but that reloading is just like rechambering a card 98 or something. I don't know. An advanced form of sniper warfare. The military-operated rail sniper, Moors, is a one-shot beast offering high damage with exceptional handling. Distance is an afterthought, okay, with this long-range and accurate sniper with what might be the perfect combination of accuracy and damage, okay. The weapon has single-round devastation with a reasonably rapid reload rate. So yeah, it sounds like it's like that. Well, yeah. it sounds like it's going to one-shot at any range to me, or this whole blog post is just In a multiplayer, lie. I think for sure, yeah. The more sniper rifle, its weapon blueprints, and certain other content will not be available on Warzone Mobile. Okay, don't care. I mean, I so, know multiplayer, but this to me sounds like they're adding another one-shot Warzone sniper. That's the question, isn't it? I mean, they say one-shot beast, high damage, long-range sniper handling. rifle, single-round devastation. If they do all that and it doesn't one-shot in Warzone, then they would, yeah, this whole thing would be a lie. So I'm I'm almost positive it'll be a one-shot. To any distance, I don't know. I would think the way they describe it. The cat can do it, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I certainly hope so. But the last time they added a new sniper, the XRK Stalker, it did not one-shot at any range in Warzone until after until later. So have they learned their lesson? I don't know. I wish they would have mentioned it, but what I will say is that if this cannot one shot at launch in Warzone, they will almost certainly add that functionality by like season three reloaded at the latest. That would be my guess, but will it be in at launch? Hopefully, because it would be cool to be able to use a, really fast ADS sniper that can one shot headshot at any range. But the downside is you have to rechamber literally after every single bullet. I think that's like a reasonable trade off and it offers a new sniper for people that like to snipe in Warzone. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, next is a punching dagger. It looks like the gladiator don't care. Um, and then the Ball 27 AR will be coming mid-season. Mm. So you have a little inspect image of it. Looks like a gun for sure. What does it look like, Tanner? Like the Ball 27. Oh, is that a real gun? It's from Advanced Warfare. Oh, okay. I never played that game. A bullpup prototype weapon designed to increase Infinite fire rate over time. What? Infinite Warfare, whatever it was, I'll never... I will get those oh. two mixed up 100% yeah. of the time, so it's from one of those games. I think it's a um Okay. Increase fire rate over time while the trigger is squeezed. The first four shots are slower to fire, but highly accurate. And then it gets faster as you hold down the trigger. So this is like the opposite of the uh, Evolver, where it starts off slow and gets fast. Or wait, starts Eradicator. off the hyperburst. Yeah, which is what I said. It's and like the, the opposite SBA, of the yeah. Eradicator. Yeah, which is pretty interesting. I don't know if we've seen that lately. Maybe we have. I don't remember I it remember. being like this in, when it was in COD before, to be honest. I don't remember it having a different fire rate. Maybe it did. I mean, I didn't play that game a ton, but this was like one of the most popular guns from that game. Yeah. I, yeah, I never played it, so I don't know. Yeah, so this is weird. So it's like a hypo burst. It's like the first four shots are slower, and then it gets faster. But those first four shots are more accurate. That actually sounds super interesting for Warzone. Like, you get your first four shots on, and it's very easy to do. And then to, like, secure the kill, the bullets start flying out faster. But then you're going to have a little more recoil. 
could be really good, maybe. It all depends, obviously, on the stat line, but top loads top loading, like a P90, I guess, with a reasonably rapid ammo swap. This fast firing, future proof AR shreds at closer ranges, has a moderate kick that drifts upward, offers great default reticles. What does that mean? Like default iron sights? And comes with a 60 round mag once you've leveled it up, doubling the available ammo between reloads. So it's a default 30 round mag. You can get a 60. That's good, by the way. They've been adding guns that don't have enough ammo. Yeah. So a 60 round mag option is good. I don't know what great default reticles means. I'm going to go get water. Yeah, they don't make that sound like their iron sights, but. I don't know. Yeah, because I now that I think about it, I did see some people talking about this on Twitter saying like, is it going to have some sort of like holographic type actual reticle that looks like an iron or something? Kind of like an advanced warfare gun maybe had. I'm not sure, but uh, this will be a fan favorite. Hopefully it's not terrible. Uh, I think this would be a good gun to make meta in wars on. That would probably be fun. So that's cool. Moving on here, we have some aftermarket parts, eight of them coming. Um, so here we go. First one, the Jack Cutthroat, which is for mostly ARs and some submachine guns. This 3D printed stock provides an unrivaled combination of speed and stability while aiming down sights. That's cool. So it can be used on, yeah, MCW, MTZ, M4, okay, AMR9. Oh, that's it, just those ones. Interesting. Uh, that sounds pretty good, but if it's locked to just those guns, it won't matter at all. Yeah. Like, cool, there's a stock that gives me speed and stability will ADS with an MW2M4. Okay. I yeah, got excited because when I first read this, too, I was like, oh, that sounded like a cool one, so it's not, so that's terrible. Uh, next one here, this has been leaked for a long time. BP50 SMG, basically. It converts a BP50 to a close quarter 9mm conversion kit with a shortened receiver and high capacity magazine. So that could be an interesting one to look out for. That could maybe kill faster than SMGs. Um, mm -hmm. So that could be a fun one. That essentially is taking the BP... That's, we're almost just getting a whole new gun there. It's just an SMG version of the BP50. So that one would be one to look out for, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I wonder how high capacity we're talking also. Yeah, I don't know. Judging from that drum mag, I would think it's like a 50. Oh, does is there a picture of it? Let me see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that looks like a 50 to me. That is that is cool. That's like we're basically getting a new SMG, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. So that could be dope. But it would use AR ammo, probably. So that could make it a little annoying in Warzone. No, what's interesting is it looks like from the screenshot, kind of... Um, doesn't it look like it adds like a foregrip on the gun? Like you wouldn't even be able to put a foregrip on there. Uh, yes, and you're probably correct because a lot of the aftermarket parts yeah. will bar a bunch of other attachments, which is kind of annoying. It's a good idea for balance purposes if they implement it well, but yeah, who knows if this will be implemented well? Yeah. And yeah, that Jack Cutthroat, this really sucks because the idea of an aftermarket start, uh, stock that adds a ton of handling at the cost of like a ton of recoil, maybe like one step up from no stock attachments, that's a really cool attachment idea. And I could see that being super relevant depending on the gun, but then you can only use it on like five guns. And yeah. it's like, okay. Like the AMR9, though, I could see that actually being relevant for. Because what's the biggest downside of the AMR9 right now? Sprint of fire and ADS time. So if you could add this on and it becomes way faster, and then you keep the crazy damage range the AMR9 has, that could be relevant depending on how much recoil it would add. So yeah, I think that maybe. could be possibly good. That th um, the stock is like an ADS movement stock though, so it's probably not going to help with your sprint to fire. It's probably not going to help yeah, with your actual ADS point. time. So I don't know. And then it wouldn't be that relevant. Yeah, it depends on the stats. That's true. But another thing to keep in mind is like, 
Yeah, all the guns it lists are like pretty irrelevant right now. Like the MCW, the MTZ. They don't say which MTZ, by the way. I assume uh, the they mean M both because they're saying that's probably a 556 and a 762. Yeah. Keep in mind, like, even though these guns are like pretty irrelevant right now, they're also going to do weapon balance and continue to do weapon balance. So if they like buff the MCW again, this stock might become relevant, even if it's not like at launch. So overall, I like the idea. I just wish it were available on more guns. But that Revenger kit sounds cool for the BP-50 as well. The next one is the Jack Jawbreaker. This is for... Oh no! And he's coming back to KBAM, by the way. The KV... Broadside, baby. Woo! The MW2 shotgun. My favorite... Probably my favorite shotgun ever in Warzone. Um... Converts the shotgun into a... Okay, never mind. I should have read more. Converts the shotgun into a hard-hitting automatic battle rifle. I mean, maybe it'll be good. I don't know. I doubt it. But this is, again, like we're getting... This another one's hard gun, to even gauge. It's rifle. just like, okay, it's I don't know what to, to do say. with that information. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's impossible to say. Actually, you know what? No, it's not. It's an MW2 gun, so it'll be terrible. It'll be really Probably, slow. Probably, yeah. Yeah, so... L. Uh, the Jack Shadow Titan kit for the Bruin Mark 9 LMG converts converts it into a compact and integri integrally suppressed light support weapon chambered in 300 blackout. Huh. Okay. Yeah, don't know what potentially good. Hard to say. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I have, no I have nothing to add. The Jack Patriot for the... Oh my goodness. What are we doing? For the MW2 M16. Because that's what everyone loves to use. Converts the M16 into a full auto gun. This is what we needed though. With a heavy ported barrel built to... Barrel built to provide superior recoil control and firing aim stability. I like the idea of aftermarket parts that make burst weapons full auto because that's way more relevant than going in the other direction. Yeah. But again, it's an MW2 gun. Find it hard to believe this is going to be good, but maybe we'll see. Um, Wardens weekly challenge unlock. This is for the Lockwood Mark II, the MW2 Red Rider. Got it. Relive the glory days. Stir up the hornet's nest and take down your enemies. Leaving no loose ends with these museum-worthy akimbo lever action shotguns. Got it. Okay. So you can get model 1887s. That'll be nerfed really bad and won't be good. Cool. Uh, the Jack Atlas kit for the AMR9 exclusively converts it into an extremely lethal and accurate five-round burst chambered in 5.56. Okay. Got it. It's like a swordfish. And photonic charge barrel for the new sniper. Actually, they're going to be adding an aftermarket part for it. This hyper advanced barrel is more than simply a barrel. Holding the trigger charges the rifle and releasing fires a single high powered energy projectile. So it's going to be like the Spartan laser, basically. Probably not needed in Call of Duty games. No. Probably not. Yeah, so, not looking forward to that one. Yeah, so this is exactly like uh, Season 2, where most of the aftermarket parts are a meme uh, and, and almost certainly will not be relevant, but some of them may be. Um, although, one thing I will note is, unlike last season, none of these aftermarket parts are for all weapons. Whereas with, like, the Jack Glassless Optic, that was for all weapons. We didn't get anything like that. That's a letdown. We need more universal. Yeah, none of these. Parts. I'm not sure how many of these are going to be viable. Doesn't sound like too many. Yeah. So hopefully some are and it's possible. But yeah, I mean, a photonic charge barrel. Got it. Mainline the mainframe. Maintain the stasis with black cell. Nah. So yeah, they talk about black cell. We're not talking about this, obviously. Um, lots of intimidating words on the screen here. Reading is hard. Um, new store offerings. Okay. 
Cheech and Chong. Okay. Godzilla and Kong New Empire bundles. I will say that white operator skin on the left looks dope. Looks super visible, but it looks good. Looks cool. The no, Kong one MCW. actually looks Surely cool too. Surely they're buffing it, right? Surely. Oh yeah, it's possible. Certainly possible. All three of these look cool, actually. These are good-looking operator skins. So anyway, whatever. The Emperor pack is coming as well. There's a marble statue of a Roman-looking guy with a sword. Okay. Um, other incoming bundles. There's a sloth. You can play as a sloth. You can play as a dragon person. A dragon man. You could play as a brain in a vat. Shout out to uh, Descartes there. And then some other thing on the right. Those so all look like some... they're going to be like $35 bundles. Those are going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So for you memers out there, the sloth with the weed leaves. Yeah, that's going to be very popular. You better get used to that skin. You're going to see it a lot. And they're going to be cheating also. Um, and then new challenges, events, and seasonal progression. Season three's content tsunami doesn't stop. You guys need to stop. Uh, so other weekly challenges, whatever. So here we're seeing a weapon camo. And I'm assuming this is for all weekly challenges. You get this weapon camo. That's what I'm getting from this. Um, I don't know how to feel about it. I don't think I like it very much. It's like black with like blue little icons. I don't know. I, it doesn't look very good. But there are going to be events. The Godzilla and Kong Battle for Hollow Earth will be launched on April 3rd. So when the season launches uh, to the 10th. Discover the mysterious power of the Monster vs. Mightiest Titans. Earn XP to unlock exceptional rewards. And then equip some of the operator skins for a boost. So it's not going to be an actual in-game event, it doesn't seem like. It's going to be one of those, like, you do stuff and then unlock things out of game. So, okay. Um, whatever. And then some other events, I'm not going to read all these. I don't know if there are any events like the Kong versus Godzilla thing no, we had in Caldera. No, not like that, no. Which is a good thing. Yeah, of course. I'm glad they didn't bother wasting dev resources doing that. Um... And it's just these out of game events and instead. So anyway, season three reloaded events. This is coming mid season. Obviously there will be more events and that's all they say. So they made a whole section to write one sentence. Okay. Um, whatever military appreciation month. Wow. Did you know there was a military appreciation month? I had no idea. No, I did not know that existed. So, uh, they're adding more prestige challenges. Cool. And more levels, so you can get to up to level 650. 650. Yep. Uh, MW3 free trial, so stay off the game, because there are going to be a ton of cheaters when that's going on. From the 4th to the 8th. Got it. Uh, and then that's it. So, wow, we did it. Season 3. The only thing we didn't talk about, as we said, is Rebirth Island, which we'll be getting more into on Saturday. But looking at all the content we're going to be getting... What are your thoughts? A uh, whole lot of content, yeah. Especially if you're a Lots multiplayer player. If you're a multiplayer gamer or a resurgence gamer, this is like the best season of Warzone ever for you. Uh, unfortunately, it kind of just seems like not getting much on Urzikstan. Hopefully, I mean, even just getting like interesting gameplay updates in the patch notes, you know, that could... Just any sort of gameplay feature, like like let's say, for example, they add bunny hopping back. That right there is enough to to make Urzik Stan feel different and fun again, and I could play Urzik Stan. But if we don't get any core gameplay changes or anything interesting like that, then uh, yeah, unfortunately, I guess I'll just probably just be forced to play Resurgence the whole season. Yeah, which might not be the end of the world, especially because unlike this season, the ranked map will actually be a good one. Um, and again, we'll get into that more on Saturday. But yeah. If you're an Urzikstan enjoyer, this is a massive L of a blog post. Because not only did not much, if anything, change on Urzikstan. I mean, what did we get? 
We're getting new weapons that we can use on Urzik Stan, and there's probably going to be weapon balancing too. So the weapon meta will probably will likely change up. That'll make things interesting, especially if that new sniper uh, is good. So okay, that's something. But weapon metas get stale after a couple weeks, I would say, if that's all there is. Um, what else are we getting? Bunkers. Super doesn't matter. Um, again, that'll be interesting for maybe a day if you're going for them, and then they're going to become irrelevant. Uh, and then we're getting, what else? A gulag event that'll happen 5% of the time, like the night vision gulag that I literally ne have never seen once. So Urzikstan basically didn't change at all. And even worse... They didn't say anything about what they plan to do later on in the season with Urzikstan. So a lot of times they'll say like, hey, we plan on doing this. Maybe mid-season Urzikstan's getting something. There was none of that either. So this is pretty yikesy. And no mention of big map ranked. Massive L. So again... Yeah, I know. Again, I say, what is World Series of Warzone going to look like? Are we getting anything for Urzikstan? Are we getting big map ranked? They still haven't even talked about it. Um, so on the on the bright side, again, there is a lot of new content. A lot, most of which is getting directed at Rebirth Island. Uh, that was a huge problem this season because they were adding things to Fortune's Keep, and that map sucks. But again, adding new things to a good map is definitely better. So I anticipate Season 3 is going to be more interesting than Season 2 was for pretty much everyone, but uh, still not great if you enjoy Battle Royale, which a lot of people do, and I count myself among them generally. So we'll see how it goes, and we'll talk a lot more about Rebirth on Saturday. But with that, there are a couple of other things, I guess. Raven did a tweet. We don't need to talk about that. They already put that in the blog post that we'll talk about. That we uh, don't need to talk I about. I wasn't sure if that was in the blog post. Yeah. Yeah. So what else, what else do we have here? Uh, not much. Uh, we got an update a few days ago. We talked about this on the Patreon episode. Um, Team Ricochet has implemented multiple ban waves across several detections, resulting in almost 30,000 bans. They say on boosting lobbies, artificially inflating SR won't be permitted. Accounts engaging in this behavior will be banned. We consider... We will consider all available technical and legal options for shutting these illicit services down. So TLDR quickly is that there is a Chinese boosting service slash company where we don't know how it works, but basically you get put in lobbies with people who just stand there. It's like they're not actually playing the game and you just get a bunch of free kills. So you can check this all in Warzone ranked. You can go to the top 250. And you can look at players' uh, SR games over the last, like, three to five matches. So you'll see some guy who's number 25 in the world. His last three matches, he has over 300 SR in each game. That's, like, not possible unless you're doing that. Let's keep in mind, in ranked play and top 250, you're starting at a deficit of, like, 280 SR. So they're gaining basically almost, like, 600 SR in one match. Not possible unless you're doing these boosting services. So that's been going on. Um, so yeah, that's been the, a big thing on Twitter. And so they banned a bunch of people. And a bunch of these people are still in the top 250. Not sure if they're going to remove them. People want them to. They probably won't though. So half of the top 250 will probably be boosters by the end of the season. Yep. Yeah, we talked about this more, a lot more on our last Patreon episode. So we're not going to really say much more than that here. Uh partially because there's not that much to really say. I mean, this is bad. This is crazy. Uh, I don't know how they're doing it. I'm glad that they, that Call of Duty at least acknowledged that it's happening and that they're saying it's not allowed, which is obvious. Um, but the big question that remains, like Tanner just mentioned, and a lot of people on Twitter are saying this as well, is will they retroactively remove accounts from the top 250 leaderboard who were obviously getting into these bot lobbies, boost lobbies. We don't know, but as Iceman Isaac had said on Twitter, 
They didn't do that during the Alt F4 season for people who were obviously abusing that. So if we go by precedent, then yeah, like half the top 250 people who earn all those rewards, all those people who grinded, are just going to get kicked out by people who are botting, who are level like 10, and they're rank 5 in the world with SR. So pretty bad, yeah. but at least they acknowledge that it's happening, I guess. But we'll see if they... I think, again, the big question is, will they remove the accounts that are already in top 250 that were obviously uh, boosting? We don't know. Yeah. So... Uh, next up here, David Vonderhaar, former lead of Treyarch, who recently started Vendy his Bops. own um, studio, had an interview with G Gibbiz, G I Biz. I, I don't know what that's supposed to be, uh, but here's a little part of it that Charlie Intel pointed out that I thought was somewhat interesting. So this is what David Vonderhaar said: "I thought I would just make Call of Duty, and then I would retire, and that would be the end of my career." And I think I'd be pretty happy with that. That's not a bad career, right? But when you get to be when you get to be 18 years of making a game that's franchised in that way, that goes on that long, what you can do to that game gets harder and harder to do because it's so big and popular for a reason. You can't demolish the things that people like about it. You can only do so much different within something that big. I want the whole game to be different, not just a little bit of this and a little bit of that, this game mode or that game mode, right? And that's, yeah, that's kind of the thing is when you've had a franchise running since like 2004, 2005, whenever it was that COD 1 came out, 2003 maybe, you can't make drastic, drastic, drastic changes. You can't all of a sudden turn into Battlefield and make it 64-player multiplayer lobbies with vehicles. You can't drastically change the game. That's why every year, it's essentially not much different. The game changes, right. things get better, other things get worse. The next year, a lot of things get worse and a few things <laughs> get better. The following year they make it a little bit better from the previous year, but still not as good as two years ago. And then they ruin a bunch of things halfway through the game. That's the cycle. That's what it is. So it's kind of interesting to hear him, you know, just flat out saying what a lot of us think, which is a game franchise this way. There's really only so much you can do with it. Like they're, they can't do a lot of things. So it, it was interesting to hear that, that he's saying like, you know, he, that's basically why he left then because he couldn't do what he wanted to do anymore. Yeah, exactly. And I kind of wonder if a lot of that is due to the unified engine COD has gone to and that it's going to be really interesting to see Treyarch's game next year or this year, sorry, to see how it feels because I'm guessing it will no longer feel like a classic Treyarch game that everyone's used to um, and think It'll so. be the first vundi -less think, COD, yeah. Yeah, I just, I feel like... Or Treyarch COD. Yeah. I feel like the way yeah, everything's going, weird. it's going to feel similar more similar to modern warfare it's going to look more similar to that it's not going to be like a drastically f different feeling game like Treyarch games used to be so i kind of feel like that's why he left is that they he was kind of being forced to do something he just no longer wanted to do anymore yeah and couldn't make any changes that he wanted yeah and after 18 years i sympathize with that for sure yeah. I, I i i'm that's not surprising but he is right i mean and Look at, dude, look at like BR right now or BR in Caldera when Ted Timmons took over. This is, he made the problem that Vundy is pointing out here, which is like people like a game for a reason. And if you change too much, then um, you're going to lose what people love about it and what makes it so big and so popular. Yeah. And that is exactly what happened with Caldera. Uh, when they added redeploy tokens and all the regain mechanics and all that goofy stuff is that uh, Ted Timmons tried to do too much and then changed the big successful popular thing called Warzone so drastically that it stopped feeling like Warzone because Vundy's right. There's only so much you can do to a game that is popular for a reason. And if you do too much, it'll stop being the thing that got it popular. You can't, you got to keep doing what got you to the dance, as they say. And um, 
Fundy understands that. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I completely understand. So. Yep. Um, and these other things, I don't have time for. I have an eye doctor appointment I have to get to, so we're not talking about these right now. We'll do it Saturday if we have time. Yeah. It's all about X Defiant. Yeah. Uh, that game's a joke. Which we can so, wait yeah. weeks to talk about it because the game's not coming out for five years. Oh, the years. game isn't yeah. releasing, yeah. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Stay humble. Stay humble.